Okay, I'm going to be demonstrating the uh, seven stages of Spencer technique and some of the modifications that I like to do with, uh, with it. And so typically we're seeing somebody that's having glenohumeral dysfunction, okay, so glenohumeral joint dysfunction, uh, whether it be the, you know, very often I find it's a capsular related kind of problem. I, um, I do some little kind of uh, tweaks and variations that I find makes it much more effective than just the standard way that I learned this when I was in medical school. So when I'm starting off in extension over here, so I like to stand behind them for part of it, I like to stand on uh, towards the head of them for part of it, in front of them for part of it. So um, I'm going to be kind of keeping my hand, my cephalad hand kind of capped around the, uh, um, the, the capsule of the joint right over here. I'm going to bring them back into some extension to start, okay? When I feel like I'm at my extension barrier, then I can have him do some muscle energy over here. So go ahead and try to push your shoulder forward a little bit for me. Making sure that he's pushing enough that you're feeling those respective forces that are engaging the muscles around the shoulder joint right over here. And relax. And once he relaxes, I can take it to that new barrier. But again, long lever, short lever. So this is my long lever, this is my short lever. I'm gonna use my hand right over here to help kind of work on that capsule a little bit further, bring it a little bit more into extension locally right here at the capsule. Okay, and then I can have him push again and relax and then take it a little bit further and then work on that capsule a little bit further. And while I'm doing that, I can use this to kind of get it just a little bit further. Okay, um, when I'm doing extension, uh, um, then that, I'm, I'm sorry, when I'm doing flexion, then I can step over here, I'm gonna switch my hand, so now I'm staying at the head of the table, grabbing them right over here, bringing that arm up until I feel, okay, so that's kind of that terminal kind of flexion amount right here. Okay, still having my hand kind of scooped around the capsule right over here. So go ahead and try to pull down for me. And remember, there's no winner, okay, so equal battle and relax. And when he relaxes, I can take it up a little bit slack. Relax, relax. I can take up the slack a little bit more and then I can work on that capsule a little bit more right over here. Making sure you're kind of doing it down to that myofascial level that you're not dragging on the skin, causing the skin burn. Okay, and do that again. And relax. And depending on how much restriction I feel in a respective motion might depend on if I do a full three cycle series of, you know, myofascial release and muscle energy. Uh, if I barely feel anything, then maybe I'll just do one. Uh, coming up over into abduction over here, again, same kind of thing. So just go ahead and kind of push down and relax. And then I can take that new barrier and then I can kind of work on that capsule over here, just trying to stretch it a little bit more down here. So again, long lever, short lever, right over here. Now, this kind of brings us to the circumduction kind of portion. So there's the compression and circumduction and there's the traction and circumduction. I feel like these parts get very underemphasized when being taught to the medical students. And I think it's actually probably the most important part of when we're doing seven stages of Spencer. So think about like a mortar that you're trying to kind of break something up, like you're trying to kind of grind something up in a mortar. Think about glenohumeral adhesions, typically that we're trying to kind of work on that might have developed. When I'm doing the compression and circumduction, I'm trying to kind of push down through a vector down into the glenohumeral joint, and I'm trying to break up any adhesions that might be kind of adhered onto the labrum or into that center part of the glenohumeral joint. So I start kind of small, and I kind of work myself into a circle, and I start like clockwise or counterclockwise, and then I kind of switch it up. And if I feel like, ooh, that's an area I need to work on, then I kind of stay in there, smaller circle until it kind of resolves itself, and then I kind of build bigger circles after that. Try not to punch them in the face with their own hands simultaneously. Now, once we're doing the traction with circumduction, think about more of the, you know, so we're, we're, before we were kind of grinding the bottom, now we need to kind of grab the walls of that, um, that mortar over there. Okay, so we're trying to get more of the edges of the glenohumeral capsule. So with that, I will typically kind of grab them at the wrist right over here. You can grab them at the elbow. I feel like you kind of grab a little bit too hard, so I like the wrist. And then again, I will start over here while maintaining that traction, bringing them through some range of motion here. But what are some big motions that are gonna be very practical? So a lot of people have issues trying to bring themselves up in abduction, external rotation, like trying to do their hair. Uh, so what's another one? Bringing back over here, like somebody that's trying to scratch their back, women trying to kind of take their bra off or anything like that. So abduction and internal rotation. So to help with the abduction external rotation, I'll come over here, same kind of thing where I'm working with my hand like I was before, but keeping that traction on and bringing it through a range of motion, working on that capsule with my hand over here simultaneously. And so I find that help, tends to help a lot. And sometimes you'll hear some pops and cracks as you're doing this because you're breaking up some of that scar tissue. 
bring them down over here. Okay, so I'm bringing them down over here, maintaining that traction, trying to bring them in some internal rotation simultaneously. So I'm trying to kind of internally rotate it as I'm kind of bringing them down here, working on that fascia while I'm maintaining that traction. We're really trying to kind of work that shoulder there. Okay, after I do that, then I kind of go on to the internal rotation part of it. So you can try to, um, can you move the camera down just a little bit here? So you can see down here a little bit. Okay, so when I'm doing the internal rotation part, sometimes you try to kind of bring the arm back over here. If you just try to bring it back, they're so restricted, it's very uncomfortable for them. You can see their, you know, their face just kind of like really kind of tensing up and you can just tell you're not gonna be able to get them there. So some tricks that you can do are you can kind of try to straighten the arm out and then kind of bring it back over here. And that usually makes it easier to be able to get in internal rotation. But again, being a wrestler, liking the levers, sometimes I will just go ahead and I'll just snake my arm right through like this. And that usually makes it very nice so that I have good control of it right over here. And then I can control the arm right over here. So I'm gonna have you go ahead and try to push your hand into me this way here so you kind of bring it back into external rotation. So go ahead and do that and relax. And then I can simultaneously bring it a little bit more over here, work on it a little bit more right over here. And so I find that to be a very helpful adaptation to be able to do the internal rotation part of it. So now we're gonna come to the front. So when doing the external uh, um, rotation component of the seven stages of Spencer, I like to stand more on the uh, anterior aspect of them over here. I'm gonna kind of keep my hand on the top of the shoulder, kind of overlying the uh, uh, lateral aspect of the bloody hemorrhoid joint. I'm gonna take their hand and they're, put their wrist kind of over my forearm right here. That really creates a nice lever so that when I kind of push down on his elbow immediately right over here, it naturally creates some adduction and it also does a little bit of extra rotation simultaneously. Now this one can be pretty uncomfortable for the patient. So again, I'm always watching the patient's face, getting feedback from them, letting me know if I'm pushing you too far here. Okay, so go ahead and lift up for me a little bit and relax. And then we relax it, I can also Try to kind of help the joint a little bit here with my hand and kind of spring it a little bit there. But especially with adhesive capsulitis, sometimes that's a big one that's a little bit more restricted. The final stage of Spencer is doing a pump-like technique. And so uh, some people have heard it as more of like a traction. I really learned it as more of a lymphatic pump. So we've just done a lot that can potentially stir up a lot of irritation within the glenohumeral joint. So we want to kind of lymphatically get all that kind of uh, irritated material out of there. And so what I like to do is I like to stand behind them with this, okay? Unless they're just totally gross, I uh, put their hand on my uh, uh, neck right over here, and I try to pinch it against my, uh, my shoulder and my neck right over here, just so if I just do this alone, I can get a little bit of a lift right on them here. So that way, again, long lever and then short lever is gonna be right here. Okay, so I kind of do this right over here, and then I do a pumping kind of motion with my hands around the glenohumeral joint, trying to kind of create that siphoning kind of thing in the mortar trying to, again, siphon out any kind of buildup of materials, maybe break up some residual scar tissue that we haven't already gotten to. And usually this feels pretty nice for the patient. You shouldn't be pinching on them too much as you're doing that. And so that kind of concludes how we would be doing the seven stages of Spencer.